day 40, honors physics, work and energy. So we talked about work yesterday, and just to kind of refresh our memories, work is essentially a transfer of energy from one object to another. Energy is the ability to do work. So it seems a little bit secular, but let's go through this. And the units are consistent, like yesterday, the units for energy are joules, newton meters, and we'll use a capital J for joules. And energy, and you probably discussed this quite a bit in eighth grade, there's different forms of energy, nuclear energy, electromagnetic energy, which comes in different types. Light is a form of electromagnetic energy, x-rays, gamma rays, ultraviolet, infrared, and a few others. We're going to save those for second semester. What we'd like to focus on today and this semester are the two basic forms of mechanical energy. And they are kinetic, and as you know, kinetic means something associated or the energy associated with motion. Something that is moving has kinetic energy. Then there's potential, which comes in different forms, but energy, uh, potential energy is energy stored or associated with an object's position. So, for example, a rubber band can have elastic potential energy if you stretch it. If it's not stretched, it does not contain any potential to do anything, no energy. Springs, once again, if you stretch or compress a spring, a relaxed spring doesn't have any energy stored in it, but a stretched or compressed spring would have some energy stored by virtue of its potential uh, position ready to do something. Chemical potential energy, batteries can do something, gasoline, food, all have chemicals in them that can convert that energy, that stored energy, into other types, namely one of them, kinetic energy. But the one we'll focus on the most in a few minutes here is gravitational potential energy. Of the different types of potential, that's the one we're going to focus on. Let's take a look at kinetic energy mathematically for a second here, or for a couple minutes. The equation, without proving it, for kinetic energy is one-half mv, that's a v, squared. So Ke stands for kinetic energy, energy due to the motion of an object. Its units are joules, and the, the formula is one-half m, which is the mass of the object, in kilograms, times the velocity squared, or the speed squared. It's just the magnitude of the velocity. And it is a scalar. It's not a vector. There's no direction associated with kinetic energy. One thing to note of in this equation is the velocity is a big contributor to the kinetic energy of an object. One example would be like if you double the velocity of an object, its kinetic energy goes up by a factor of four. If you triple the velocity of an object, its kinetic energy goes up by a factor of nine. We'll talk more about that later. And then mass also contributes, but unlike velocity, it's not a squared contributor. If you double the mass of an object for the same velocity, it has twice the kinetic energy, so it's just proportional to the factor of which you increase or decrease the mass. And then the gravitational potential energy, which we abbreviate GPE for obvious reasons. And without proving it, the GPE of an object is the mass times the gravitational constant times height, mgh. Gravitational potential energy, once again, is in joules. I'm not going to spend time proving that to you. If you want to see the proof of that, you can stop by after class or after school. But anyway, the mass has to be in kilograms to be conventional here. Gravity's acceleration is 9.81 meters per second squared. That will always be given, or you have that memorized. And you have your height relative to a given position in meters. What we normally do with gravitational potential energy, because you can take your zero level as any level that you determine, but we usually pick the, 
the ground or the floor as the zero, and your height is from the floor. But you could take your tabletop as your zero position and then your height off the table as your GPE relative to the tabletop. So it is relative to where you're measuring from. One of the big ideas as we go forward here is going to be whether or not your GPE is changing, whether you're increasing or decreasing your GPE. Not so much where your zero spot is, but we'll give you some examples of that going forward. But let's just practice a little bit with both these mechanical types of energy. Problem number three here, the kinetic energy of a 90 mile per hour fastball. Now, we do need to convert that into meters per second because we do not want miles per hour. And you don't need to show the work for that, but a 90 miles per hour comes out to be, to two sig figs, 40 meters per second. But it's kind of a no-brainer. It's sort of, well, basically it's a plug and chug to figure out the kinetic energy of this baseball. Just say kinetic energy equals, well, one-half mv squared is the generic equation. So to plug in our numbers, which we now have in their proper units, it's one-half times the mass. Now, 960 grams is 0 0.960 kilograms. So you do need kilograms. Divide by 1,000 to get from grams to kilograms times the 40 squared. All right, so that's just, you go to your calculator, plug those numbers in, and you get 968 joules. I'm just going to round off the two sig figs. Whoops, no, 700, 770, 768 joules of kinetic energy. All right. Now, let's do the example of uh, number four here, GPE, gravitational potential energy. So the basic equation is GPE equals mgh. So the GPE of this box is the mass of the box, 50 kilograms. That's what we like. That's what we like, 50 kilograms times 9.8. If you want to round off the 10, you may times the height, 1.3 meters. So this box has a GPE of 637, or to two sig figs, 640 joules. And what you should notice here is that GPE is equivalent to the amount of work you did back in problem number two yesterday in class because that's one of the connecting concepts here. When you do work, it's a transfer of energy. In this case, a person lifting a box essentially is transferring energy from their body, from the chemicals in their body, the chemical potential energy from the food that you ate, transferring that energy into the energy of position for the box, 640 joules here of GPE relative to the ground, that was the work done, transfer of energy from the person to the box. And likewise, if you went back to problem number three, the kinetic energy of that fastball, the 770 joules, would also be a transfer of that chemical potential energy from the person's body into that baseball. 